नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध homage to the blessed one the exalted one the fully enlightened one so dear dhamma practitioners when it come to spiritual practice especially meditation or the religious practice the mainly that there are few things we have to understand so sometimes when it come to meditation we like to learn techniques so but when it come to buddha's teaching more than the techniques in buddha's teaching especially the main purpose giving principles and when it come to meditation samatha and vipassana so in tranquility meditation you use techniques that's why it called chitta bhavana but when it come to vipassana meditation you have to use principles when it come to techniques or the tools or the tips and it is very limited and it depend on the conditions time and space and the environment but when it come to principles it is not belong to a time it is universal so practicing samatha is following kind of tips and it's kind of following techniques and uh, when it come to vipassana it's you deeply understanding principles so but in day to day life as ordinary people we more comfortable with techniques but principles more stronger than the techniques as example it like this so for a artist and uh, the artist not depending on tools so maybe he having a good pen that the pencil or the brush but if he know the principles regarding the art maybe he use anything as a tool even piece of paper or toothbrush or even piece of wood he use as a tool but if you learn the tools if you depend on the tools without that tools you cannot do things and uh, so the musicians also if you look if you develop the principles maybe anything you can use as an instrument but sometimes you depending on instrument without that instrument you cannot sing so when it come to spiritual practice we do chanting prayers puja and uh, fasting so we do many things those are kind of like tools and every day you you have a kind of like uh, practicing rituals 
even the precepts. So those are tools. But when the tools become our principles, we become very limited. So vipassana is a method you go beyond the tools and achieve to something. Then achievement should fulfill your inner wisdom. It is not something this you become very limited to for that moment or the for that environment or for that situations or even for that moment of understanding. So that's why then remember and when it comes to tranquility meditation, we follow inhalation, exhalation as the primary mental object. So then the inhalation, exhalation is kind of like a tool. So, and at the same time, when it comes to vipassana level, it you deeply get out of that and observe the very behavior and the nature of the existence. The existence means in this very moment of your existence, not something else. So when it comes to your life, when you become very limited to head to toes and observe what is this life, physically that we can divide it to many body parts, but still when it comes to deeper spiritual understanding, it's come to five aggregates. Form, feeling, sensation, formations and recognition. That is your life. When you living means you govern, you maintain, you depending on this five aggregates. So when you use the tools as a samatha technique, you observe something outside. That is very necessary. Why? In the beginning, you have to develop to settle down with the one pointness. So your mind need to settle down with the moment. Once the mind settle down, your mind can use for anything. So if the mind is not settled down, if the mind is busy, if the mind is always moving here and there, how you can use it? So once the mind settle down, then we go to Vipassana. So in the beginning to settle down our mind, we use our inhalation, exhalation. Observe, this is the beginning, middle and end. And then in the beginning, observe inhalation, exhalation separately, and then follow the entire continuation of the inhalation, exhalation, and observe whole breath body as one. And then while you're observing this way, some inhalation, exhalation, you feel, you may see, you may experience, it's become longer, shorter, heavy, soft, like that. Somehow, be aware, each and every inhalation and exhalations are unique. It is not similar. Even though in the beginning you may see like that, but it is different. Each and everything unique. So that to get into that understanding, you have to be independent. Because if you carry your past experience moment by moment, when with that past experience, when you observe something, you cannot see it very clearly. Why? Because that past experience disturb or give the influence to your present moment of experience. So that way you cannot get into the clear understanding. So once the mind settles down, when you go to Vipassana level, 
just forget about inhalation or exhalation or beginning, middle, end or long or short like that. Don't go to that details. Start to get into the, the sensation and through the sensation, follow the principles. So the three marks of existence, impermanent, unsatisfactory nature and selflessness. So whatever you experience in deeper level, when you go to the depth, it is okay. You become independent and question yourself and see what this is. Because you have to see mentally. Within the form, feeling, sensation and formations and recognition. So once you see and go deeper and recognize what this is, and that recognition will help you to see impermanent, unsatisfactory nature and selflessness. But don't do this mistake. What is that? So mentally you have idea about impermanent. And with that idea, don't look to see it within that whatever the pain, pain or the sensation or the feelings. So you have a feeling here and then when that feelings arise in my mind tell oh it is impermanent don't worry no that is that is not the vipassana that is what you have to understand don't have a preconditioned mind so you no need to first think about this pain is impermanent because it is then you, you not analyze it with the pre mind and observe this pain and watch and see if the pain disappear that disappearance will show you the impermanent or maybe that un, that may be the pain giving you kind of like a unsatisfactory nature but that also go away maybe then the once the pain disappear you reach to a point to feel comfort so you observe that comfort and maybe later again that pain come so then even that the the comfort also not going to be there and and deeply you observe how the pain arise there is it your wish or something else and then maybe you know uh, during the daytime you use this hand to work and do something or maybe it hit somewhere or maybe in the past there is something or maybe there is physically lack of vitamins or something or maybe your arthritis or maybe some, some reason that you know as a physical condition. So then when the pain arises, it is nothing to do with the self. It happened because of some reason. When you reasoning the pain or the sensation and recognizing the reasons and you recognize the cause and effect, when you see the cause and effect very clearly, remember this very carefully. When you see the cause and effect very clearly, without missing any part of it, there is no way to keep self-centered idea or the mind. When we don't see the cause and effect, in that gap, the wherever we missing the connection, that connection filled by the self-centered idea. That's why through the vipassana, when you become very clear and sharp within the, the form, feeling, sensation, formation, recognition, and you recognize the cause and effect, causality. Once you see that, you yourself know the reason and why it happened and how it happened, the way it happened. 
And once you have that, then there is no need to explain about the self. And once you deeply observe this pattern within your form, feeling, sensation, formation, and recognition, and you, in, a, in a certain level, you completely get out of this self-centered mind or the, the self-governed idea. And when you able to reach to that level, and that is the moment you transform this conventional life to liberation. So let's practice a little bit and keep your right palm on your left and make it straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture and bring attention to your body and a scan head to toes yourself and say Tsopateva or May I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. Detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment observing the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation and later observe the impermanent unsatisfactory nature and selflessness within your feeling, form, feeling, sensation, formations and the recognitions. Bring your attention to in front of your nose and your upper lip area. Deeply and gently breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. And follow the sensation knowingly this is inhalation this is exhalation just get a mental note and don't interfere with its natural process
just keep your mind focused to inhalation and exhalation. And follow the entire continuation of the inhalation and exhalation. Also, you may experience some inhalation and exhalation become longer, shorter, heavy, soft, warm, cold. Just accept it. Keep your attention to the sensation and recognize impermanent and satisfactory nature and selflessness.
bring my attention to your body observe your posture We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also, as far as we can, through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding ourselves like this with clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe and may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are pale or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. To your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. to all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy, without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Sri Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. So, dear Dhamma practitioners, when it comes to our ordinary human life, our main purpose is to become successful. So that success has two parts when it comes to real success. Conventionally, as an ordinary person, and also spiritually, we have to, to get out of this suffering. Otherwise, even though conventionally we become successful, in the deeper level, in the long term, that if we have to suffer more than dissatisfaction, so that success is not the real success. So when it comes to this success word, suddenly it comes to our mind, money, material wealth, and the fame, and the power, and also the characters mostly became very famous, earning a lot of money and becoming rich. That is nothing wrong. But at the same time, when it comes to the life, as I mentioned in the beginning, there are two parts in our life when we look for the success. One is tools, another one is principles. So using the tools, you can become successful. But it is very difficult to remain success. But when you follow the principles, you, you come to success, maybe it, it cannot measure by the wealth or the material or the, the becoming famous, it's like that way. But conventionally and eternally, the both way, your life going to become more, more, more meaningful when you able to follow the, the principles. So tools you can, once you know the, the principles, you can make any tools to work with that principles. But if you have tools, you cannot make principles out of the tools. So that is the important thing then here, in the beginning, it is very important to know the principles regarding the, the success of the life. So when it comes to, especially when it comes to, to vipassana practice, even though you, you practice vipassana as a deeper meditation, conventionally you become more flexible, more grounded, and you become more ordinary person in day-to-day -day life. And that make you comfortable and the other people comfortable around you. So remember, as a human being in this very lifetime, at least you have to have a very comfortable life. And also you have to, to make some space for other people. So, and you no need to look for enlightenment. You no need to look for liberation because if you look, you will never find it. It is a result come as a practice. When you fulfill the practice, 
it will come as a result of it. So what do you have to practice then? The mostly principles where it take us, it take us to, to perform as a human being. When you deeply, deeply understand impermanent, unsatisfactory nature, selflessness, you become pure, clear human being. That clarity will help you to deeply awake inside you the, the wisdom that transform you to this level to your enlightenment. Even you attain to enlightenment, you, you just become a pure, clear, natural human being. Because we are, we are not reached to even that natural, pure, clear human being. We are mostly have the, the behavior, that the collective behavior coming through this sansaric journey. Still we cannot achieve to the clear, natural, the human consciousness. So then these principles will take you there. So when it come to the, that, that principles, the very important basic principle that you have to have the clarity. Conventionally regarding what you want, where you go, who you are, for your limit. It doesn't matter how far you can see for that limits have a clear purpose in your life. What you want? Maybe you, 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 you cannot think far away. You cannot think the end. But still, whatever you have, you can see, even when you wake up in the morning, in that very morning or even for that day, have a purpose and go for it. Because there are a lot of opportunities will come to you. There are a lot of ideas will knock to you. There are a lot of roads will open towards you. But still, if you don't have the clear purpose, what you want out of this life, so what will happen? You just waste it. Maybe you will reach to the highest, but still, it doesn't make any sense. There are a lot of human beings reach to the highest and end up their life. And a lot of them had a question regarding their own life, who I am, what I did. See, they reach to the highest of the conventional success, but still, they died with the question, who I am, what I did in my life, what I achieved. So then at least as a human being, during this time period, using this Dharma, get a clear purpose to your life. It may no need to be too spiritual, even in conventionally just to become a better person, successful person yourself. Because there are certain dreams in you, there are certain that the, the characters inside you. So give a chance for that. Don't afraid to, to be who you are. So that is one of the important thing that when it comes to the, the principles, the clarity. So that it's come to the understanding yourself. Before you understand somebody or something, you just come to the, the you are, you are understanding in conventionally. And then when even spiritually, when we uh, go to the Vipassana meditation, it's about our understanding. 
regarding five aggregates, even before you go to that in conventionally, just come to a point to and see materially in your life before you die, is there anything that you want to fulfill? At least have a clear vision for your samsaric journey. Can you make a model? Can you create a clear blueprint without greed, hatred and the delusion? That will be, will be a great investment for your entire samsaric journey. Because from next life, you start to build up your life on, on that blueprint. Maybe so far in our journey, we didn't have that. So today you have an opportunity and get into that and see if using this life what you really want and before you die, is there anything that you can make it happen? And then spiritually, maybe forget about this life in your samsaric journey. If you in case if you are born in somewhere, how, what kind of knowledge, wisdom you are looking for? Because what you look, you are going to find. That's how your mind works. That's how this universe works. What you look, what you ask, you are going to get it. So then have a clear blueprint for your spiritual path even conventionally have a clear, doesn't matter whatever happened in your life, forget that everything from this point to, to your future. So the, because the success is going to change moment by moment, moment by moment. For a newly born baby, success is something. Five, uh, three years, five years old baby, success is something. And teenager success is something. Young person success is something. Elder success is something. When you get old after 90 years, 100 years, success means something else. So in this life, you need that. You have to have that success. And at the same time, develop the principles on that success, how you can transform that success to, to deeper, higher value. So that is a challenge because a lot of people didn't have that. They achieved to the highest. And they had, a, they had an opportunity to do a lot of beautiful things to this world. They are more capable to do a lot of things. But they, they cannot find that. The spiritual blueprint, they stuck somewhere in this conventional because they work with the tools, not they didn't have the principles. So that's it. The, the very first thing, clarity. And the, then the second one, that saving, the, the sharing, and how you contribute to others using that what you achieve every day. It is not after you achieve to this, oh, I'm going to do, do this or that. Living a life for other people. You have to, every day you have to develop that somehow. Even a few minutes you have to you have to give, contribute yourself. That whatever the, the life or the success or the, the you achieve, you have to contribute. Look at the Buddha. And why we why we you know after 2600 years we never saw him. You know, we had no idea, but still, why we why we you know devote our whole life and follow that because he contributes something to this entire humanity. Spending his life, and that was his goal, but he achieved to that and at the same time that achievement he shared with others. 
he contribute to others so then yourself you have to look you will achieve to something but are you sharing it with others are other people comfortable with it are you making any change in others life or are you helping for others to to come to a level oh you are just uh, you know keep keep climbing 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 just yourself so then remember sharing you know that the contribute every day somehow find a way to contribute yourself why because otherwise this material success become hell if you don't contribute that is what you know uh, by names i can tell many people you know is a i went through case studies character case studies in their life how they achieve to success and the the missing part the principles one is the the sharing and the the third one is the connection appreciation and acceptance as human being look at the buddha's life every day still after 2600 years every day is still that character has power to connect with the people every day connecting with the people even just looking at the statue you know sometimes people come they had no idea what this is you know they just come for something else but when they look at the statue they start to ask who is this he is it's it's look like something different and then when tell start to about the though he is the buddha this you know by hearing the buddha then they come to a question what is that who is that even during the buddha's time see this word now you learn this vipassana like this you heard maybe you 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 don't understand anything about this five aggregates or the vipassana like that so it happened to me also in the beginning you know few years i i i had no idea about what is this five aggregates i had no idea you know i tried to understand it but i didn't i didn't come to a point to to be very clear with that so but little by little you know it suddenly it it came to to my mind deeply i i i understand it how 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 this work what this is so it happened to you also maybe today you have no idea what this is but the thing is this during buddha's time even the people heard just the name of the buddha they never heard about the buddha they never saw the buddha but suddenly they heard through somebody they heard there is a buddha by hearing that word the buddha deeper in their you know the the mind they are blueprint that they had through the sansaric journey whatever they used to practice and looking for wisdom suddenly came up oh buddha i want to go and see and they give up even the kings they give up everything they left everything behind they just walk towards the the buddha that's it by because that because they looking that through the sansaric journey so then remember just yourself just imagine you when you hear this that you know when you hear oh there is something like this and you go for that if you look for the wisdom how about if you know there is a buddha of course you go and visit him so like that in your journey that the the connection that we build is very important so in the beginning before we come to the spiritual connection we have to develop the human connection 
you know, smiling, at least with smiling with people, talk nicely, you know, sharing ideas and giving some space for others, you know, and appreciating and respecting for others. So this is very simple, basic, fundamental human qualities. So without developing that anything, do you think suddenly overnight you can jump from this side, boom, to other side, enlightenment? It's not going to happen like that way. It's not going to happen. Even the look at the Buddha's character, you know, that sometimes with the animal, he used to recognize animals. And, and sometimes uh, we, we think nowadays, we think, you know, with the puppies, cat, you know, this animal, we think, oh, we can recognize. No, really, we, we not mostly know. Because we mostly see our own mind reflecting to, through them. That the recognizing their life separately is completely different. So, at least come to a human connection. It is a principle that you have to develop. Without that, sometimes you will reach to the success, you reach to the highest, but end of your life, it's going to become a mess. So, remember these three principles and uh, rather than getting tools to your life, and just have this in your spiritually, conventionally, and then, so you can make your own tools. See nowadays, and sometimes you cannot shake hands. And then we, we use some other different ways to, you know, treat each other. And so like that, when you have the clear connection you make a way to keep that connection. So in the beginning, clarity, and that's mean clearly understand yourself and understanding your purpose, at least conventionally as a person, at least for a day, no? Forget about till end of your life. At least try to for a day, for a month, for a year. So then contribute that whatever you achieve, you know, and learn to contribute little by little. Share your your achievement every day. You know. Another one is the connection. Keep the connection. It's highly. It's ent you know all living beings in this entire universe. But every day we 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 practice with the loving kindness. But at least in conventionally, keep the connection with the human beings. Then you can expand it to animals, nature, unseen beings. You know that unseen, you know the energy. So it's a, it's a huge network we are ex we are living with. So but at least. Try to keep the connection with the, the human. So keep it as a principle. So for that, and I gave, I'm going to give you a, this one of the character cases study. That, and time to time we used to talk about during Buddha's time, you know, the, how the people had their difficulties and how they went through life and finally they came to Buddha. And as you know, in the Western also, you know, there are many famous characters and they reach to the highest and success but end of their life and the, they, they come to kind of like a suffering. Merlin Monroe, you know, that uh, even the Michael Jackson, uh, Elvis Presley, so like that characters, when we look deeply, they had the capacity to do something higher, you know, using their, their position, but it didn't happen. 
because they they somehow they didn't able to develop that spiritual blueprint within them and there is a the character that regarding this matter in india and uh, her name is meena kumari and the meena kumari you uh, that anybody can you know study about her and especially for uh, girls and i used to give a kind of like a, you know that project for some some children even to to do a case study regarding meena kumari you know a uh, few years ago so her life the, the meena kumari she's a actress and uh, another name for her the tragedy queen she born the uh, 1st of august 1933 her father is ali box and her mother is iqbal begum so when she born the very uh, she was uh, her parents were so poor, poor and her father didn't have any money to pay for the doctor so then what the father did father was waiting for a boy but she was a girl and the father was so disappointed and uh, poor and the disappointed what he did he thought i don't want this child he took the child and put into a open age and after the next day and she, he went home and but still in his mind was his, he was kind of like a struggle oh this is my child this is my child but next day when he come back and he saw this child covered with the the ants bugs everywhere mosquitoes worms everywhere all over this child and he took her and clean her and took home so, so that's how her life is start say meena kumari and then somehow when she was 5 years old then somehow she able to start to get into movie industry and 8 years old and she start to act in a different different movies and somehow when she was 18 years old and she able to to achieve to the the highest level and the in 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 india there is a award called film fair award so 1963 and she got that award and uh, the nominating that normally for the film fair award they nominate five characters so for that award all the five characters was meena kumari meena kumari meena kumari meena kumari only she was that capable to achieve to that and there was no one came to that much success and somehow by the time when she was 18 years old and she came with the 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 man and he already married and had three children but somehow she had a affair with him and his name is kamal amro and uh, meena kumari was 18 years old and kamal amro was the 40 uh, 34 years old so they got married and she was in the top in the that level in india you know everything she had around it and then what happened 
her husband was kind of like a you know compulsive obsessive husband and she was so jealous and she he didn't give any chance to to meena kumari to be alone and he he told wherever you go you have to be with the security and even in the makeup room you have to be with the the security you cannot be alone so she became kind of like a prisoner see that she she came from the bottom very poor and reached to the highest and finally she caught up with somebody and not giving any space and then what happened so by the time and uh, this he, her husband was so arrogant now that now they having a kind of like a problem so one day in in a, a festival in the meena kuma came to the stage with the husband and now that the somebody introduced the the meena kumari and telling the this is meena kumari and the, her husband was with him and then he introduced the husband telling this is meena kumari and this is her husband kamal and he got so mad and then he he told no 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 that is not the way i am the kamal lamro then she is my wife meena kumari and that much he was kind of like a so arrogant and thinking that the self centered and egocentric man so from that day what happened the life was so difficult for her and then she had the the movie to to act and in that movie and she had the character to kind of like a drink alcohol so she act and then so her personal life and that the pressure and the tiredness loneliness rejection that everything what she did she start to to act that character same like her life but end of the movie she addicted to alcohol and at the same time there was a doctor and uh, she having uh, some sleeping problems so then he told take uh, take some brandy so every day she used to take little bit brandy and sleep and what happened then sir, she became compulsive alcoholic addictive and then she was the the top in the the india and uh, she was so famous around the world and then what happened she finally 31st of march 1972 she died alone herself and she had no money and some one of her friend spent the money for the funeral so that is a you know the real example it is a, still it is not a kind of like a buddha's lifetime happened no still if you go to that online and put the meena kumari and that you will see her character and how and what happened that everything is there and there are some books came regarding her character because it is a very important for most of the children to study and learn and she came to the highest in india and still no one reached to that level in that movie industry because the bollywood movie industry is a huge it is they they used to produce movies more than the the hollywood so this bollywood movie industry and she is the the queen but still see what happened to her and that is why rather than developing tools the principles is very important especially when it come to this ordinary life that we look and we try to achieve and we like to reach to step by step step by step but 
there are certain times come in life we have to deal with people and we have to deal with situations sometimes we have no power we have no authority we have no knowledge to to deal with that that situation but still when if you able to develop the principles within yourself this is the important thing if you develop more than the tools if you able to develop the principles it doesn't not matter whoever come to your life as a person or as a partner as a husband wife children friends or as a leader or as a president so within a few days you know the new president going to come who knows who going to come but whoever come remember it is our principles whatever we develop within ourselves going to change our life so that's why rather than looking for tools whenever you have time and take time and read regarding this life meena kumari and then remember yourself that whatever you reach to highest and your end can be completely changed so then develop the the principles yourself and with that when you become a master with the principles you can work with any tools so it is for spiritual life the same for conventional life also the same so as a human being especially when it come to vipassana practice remember you are the best person to to give a service to this entire humanity seen unseen this all living beings so you are capable to do that so that's why develop this method little by little little by little little by little yourself so with that i bless upon everyone with this good practice may all of you be well happy and peaceful may no harm come to you may no difficulties come to you may no problems come to you may you also have the patience courage understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life during this time period may everyone stay healthy and safe and finally may all of you attain supreme bliss of nibbana sabbit yo vajjantu sabbaro go vinasatu mate bhavatantarayo suki digayuko bhava ettavata cha ammi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodantu sabb sampatti siddhiya सबे भूता अनुमोदन तो सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया सबे सत्ता अनुमोदन तो सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया इदम् मे पुण्य कम मंगा सब क्या वं हो तो सब दुखा पनुं चतु